Hello, this is your teacher, Professor Keener. I'd like to comment about the reading and writing we will do this semester in English 101B. First, it will be helpful as a reader to understand that authors write literature with intention and purpose. That is, writers know what they are going to, what they are doing and why. It's a myth to think that writers sit around and channel their unconscious, that ideas just come to them and they write these down. In reality, writers write a lot and are very conscious about their writing. Writers, even fiction writers, will do research, will read, keep notebooks or journals, sit down to write every day. Their job is to write and they work hard at this. So how do we know that writers write with intention and purpose? You can look at writer's manuscripts and drafts. For example, look this page from Jane Austen's novel, Persuasion. Even if you can't read the words, notice how she has crossed out words and whole sentences and added new words in. Writers read, revise, and edit their writing. Writers tell us, sometimes humorously, that they write with intention, as this quote by Oscar Wilde suggests. I was working on the proof of one of my poems all the morning, and I took out a comma. In the afternoon, I put it back in again. Okay, so Wilde is exaggerating, but here's what James Thurber, another humorous and writer, had to say about commas in his writing. Thurber argued with his editor over whether or not a comma belonged in one of his sentences. After dinner, the gentleman retired to the drawing room for brandy and cigars. Thurber's editor wanted a comma after dinner, but Thurber refused, saying the gentleman didn't need that much time to push back their chairs. Linda Paston, an American poet, says she writes about a hundred drafts of each poem before it's done. Here are some more comments by writers about the craft of writing. Sue Grafton, an American mystery writer, says, I carry a notebook with me everywhere, but that's only the first step. Ideas are easy. It's execution of ideas that really separates the sheep from the goats. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, Nobel Prize winner in literature, says, One of the most difficult things is the first paragraph. I have spent many months on a first paragraph, and once I get it, the rest just comes out very easily. Finally, a quote by Stephen King, mystery writer. If you want to be a writer, you must do two things above all others. Read a lot and write a lot. Clearly, these writers work hard on their writing to say just what they mean and to say it well. So, if writers write purposely and with intention, then what does this imply for how we should read literature? Well, for one, we can assume that everything on the page, every word, sentence, detail, punctuation, mark, is there for a reason. We call this assumption authorial intent. That is, we assume the author placed everything in the story for a certain reason. This also implies we should read carefully and read closely, we being students and teachers of English literature. In fact, English teachers really enjoy reading closely and trying to figure out what aspects of the story create certain feelings or suggest particular ideas. Like any reader, an English teacher has an affective response, one of feeling, as well as an intellectual response, one of analysis. This is what Thomas C. Foster, professor of English, has to say about how English teachers like to read. When an English professor reads, he will accept the affective response level of the story, but a lot of his attention will be engaged by other elements of the novel. Where did that effect come from? Whom does this character resemble? Where have I seen this situation before? We might also consider why any reader would enjoy a work of literature. Here are some reasons we read. So as not to feel alone, to understand others' experiences, to read for realism or for escapism, and many other different reasons. Senator H.I. Hawakawa, who was also an English professor at San Francisco State University, said that reading gives us a way to expand our lives. In a very real sense, people who have read good literature have lived more than people who cannot or will not read. It is not true that we have only one life to lead. If we can read, we can live as many more lives and as many kinds of lives as we wish. 
All right, let's take a moment to consider how we will write in this class. You have may have written about literature in your previous English classes. Most commonly, students are asked to write a five paragraph essay, to do a close reading, or create a literary analysis. You might want to write like this in this class. However, now you are in the second semester of a college level writing class, you can be more ambitious. You can and should write more than five paragraphs in an essay. You may wish to connect the literature to your own life, as so many of us do when we read, or to other works you have read. You may want to write literature yourself by rethinking or reimagining a story, or write to the author or write to one of the characters. In this class, you will have the opportunity to expand your horizons not only through reading, but also through writing. To sum up, in this class, you will be rewarded for thinking outside the box, for reading with an open mind and an open heart, for taking some risks with your writing, and I hope very much that you will enjoy reading literature and enjoy writing about literature and have fun. Finally, in this class, remember, there are just two things that make for good writing. Have something to say and say it well.